What's going on, everybody? Hope you've all been well since episode one. We are now at March 20th. I just got back from my favorite cafe in Squamish here with a couple of snacks because today is a very exciting day. We are starting our seeds for this challenge of trying to eat from the garden for 365 straight days. So just before we start diving into that, a lot has happened since we last caught up. And so going back to episode one, when I was planning out my space, you might recall I was a little bit stressed on how to make it all work. Less than an hour in, and I'm definitely having my first kind of moment of overwhelm with this project. And so a couple of weeks ago, I put an evening aside, had a nice fire going, and finished off this plan. And so the first thing I did was I moved it onto a whiteboard so that I could move plants around a little bit more easily, but also I anticipate doing a lot of succession planting. And so that will make that really easy to plan out as well. And then after that, one of the things that was really concerning me was companion planting. And so I used the amazing companion planting guide from West Coast Seeds to make sure that all of the plants that I'm going to be putting into my garden are by other plants that will support them and that nothing is beside a competitor plant. And so we're in a really good place on that front. And so the last thing that I had to do was just a quick seed inventory to make sure that I have all of the seeds for today. So I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at being in March and starting our seeds for this challenge. And what I'm going to do is actually take these supplies that I'm going to use for starting the seeds up into my dining room upstairs. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the garage area for me, it's where we film all the content. It really feels like a workspace for me. And this has been one of the biggest kind of challenges for me is trying to find time to still be doing the gardening that I love for myself while simultaneously creating so much content for the channel here and for the community. And this is something that I fully anticipated and knew was going to be part of the journey. You know, just kind of a byproduct of turning your passion into profession. But nonetheless, definitely something that I, you know, am trying to find ways to get as much gardening time in for myself, but conscious and aware of the season of life that I'm in at the moment. All right, just about all set. Only one more thing that we need. Hey, seed starting day. Yep, didn't grab the seeds. There they are. And those. There we go. Now we are all set. And I wanna go ahead and just start diving straight in here. So why don't we take a look at what I am gonna be starting for my March seeds. We've got three types of tomatoes, the pink brandy wine, the Prairie Fire Organic, and the Sun Golds, essentially a small, medium, and large. Then we got Swiss chard, two packs of that that we're gonna be getting into, basil, and gonna be depending on that through the winter, I think. Cabbage, just cause it's aesthetically so beautiful. A lot of broccoli that I have planned here. And then a couple types of kale. So this is the Dwarf Green Curled and the Red Russian. And I've got some Lacinto from some experiments that I've already started. And so the method that I'm going to be using here is the exact same as what we've been utilizing in all of our seed starting videos. So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to that whole playlist that we've built out over this season. And it's been really cool to see just so many people having success with starting seeds this season, using our seedling mix, using our seed starting kit, and just using the method or approach that I'm about to go through here for starting these seeds. Duh, duh. Duh, and cabbage, woo, nailed it. Okay, first seeds of 2022. Well, I guess technically I already have my peppers going, but today feels like the big day. So exciting. And they go. I really like broccoli because you get the head, but you can also eat the whole plant. So it actually makes it really good from a preservation perspective. because You can blend all the leaf and the stems up into a really nice, broccoli soup. Now before I move on to the next one, I am going to be putting some little name tags in here because otherwise I'll forget and I won't know which are which. Hey, next up are our tomato babies. Uh oh, stuck to the top. There we go. So for tomatoes, I actually prefer to go primarily with cherry tomatoes. Uh, reason being is that they, you know, just mature a little bit faster. I find them to be higher yielding. You're not waiting so late into the season 
in order to be enjoying tomatoes, but it's always nice to have some larger ones as well. So that's why I like to go with a small, such as the cherry, and then a medium and large as well. Okay, now I'm just gonna prep the rest of these real quick. All right, the seeds are in, and so all that we need to do now is just add our second round of water. Cover them with about one centimeter of seedling mix, and then a third turkey base of water. Stack break. All right, so our March seeds are all set and ready to go. Now there's two kind of somewhat related pieces to seed starting that I also want to quickly cover off on today. But just before we get to those two pieces, let's get these down into the seed starting station so that they can be underneath the grow lights. All right, so our babies are underneath the grow light. They're going to start germinating, doing their thing. Now the first of those last two pieces that I wanted to quickly just cover off on is take a look here. So our pepper plants that I started back in February are doing really, really well. And so I wanna just quickly pot these up so that they're in a slightly larger home. And so for potting these up, it's super straightforward, very similar process. You can check out our video on how to go about doing it at the link up above here. I'm just gonna fill these up about a third of the way with seedling mix. Okay, and now I'm gonna remove a lot of this lower growth here. I'm doing this so that we can bury as much of the stem as possible. I'm gonna pop this baby upside down. Got some roots. And I'm gonna just begin separating these. So we can see this one over here, that's gonna be easy just to clump off. So let's give it a little yank. And then these two over here, I'm gonna do next. Give them a little yank. There. Okay, a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. And now I'm just gonna fill them up with seedling mix to get them nice and secure. I like to kind of get a bunch in there and then move it around a bit. So that they're all nicely situated. Okay, and the last thing is just a big drink of water for each of them. Okay, they've all gotten their drinks of water, so let's take them back to the seed starting station. All right, so right next door, we've got our pepper babies potted up, really, really happy, and we're all set. So just before I share that one final tip for today, for those of you that I have not met before, I'm Jordan from Mind & Soil, where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to mindful gardening. So if you're looking for more peacefulness, more joy, more restoration in your life, then I really encourage you to subscribe to our channel here, because on top of this challenge that I'm currently doing to stretch myself as a gardener, we put out tons and tons of educational videos to be taking as much of the guesswork out of gardening as possible so that you can more quickly experience its mental health benefits. So that one final bonus tip that I have for you is in regards to my potatoes. And so I'm gonna be planting my potatoes out on about April 1st, so in about 10 days from now. And so as soon as I bought my potatoes about two weeks ago, I put them into a warm and dark area, which is at the bottom of my seed starting station right here. And the reason why I do that is because that begins the chitting process or the sprouting process on them. And so all of the eyes where the growth is going to come out of, they begin to put on their first little bits of growth, which puts you a little bit ahead in the season. So if you're thinking about growing potatoes this year, I really encourage you to put them into a warm and dark place for a couple of weeks before you plant them out to begin that chitting process. So folks, that's everything that I wanted to cover off on in this next episode. I think we're in a really good position for the season ahead. There's gonna be lots of food coming in the next little bit. If you've got any questions, leave those down in the comments. Otherwise, I can't wait to catch you on the next video. Go get those hands dirty and I'll see you soon.